Let's turn back to the Sermon on the Mount this morning. Matthew chapter 6 is where we want to draw your attention today. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to begin with verse number 19. There's a little section there that is another of our uh, legacy series, important truths that we need to keep uh, ever before us. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 19. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject priorities that last. Priorities that last. We did cover a few thoughts on this, this area of, of priorities in a recent message, but I want to really focus on this today. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness! No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. That concludes the that little section there, that little paragraph or whatever. And I want to focus on that issue today of our priorities. Of course, obviously part of it here refers to mammon, and so we're dealing with possessions and, and gathering riches to ourselves. But beyond that, it mentions even earlier there about laying up for ourselves treasures in heaven. And then it goes on to say, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Sometimes we need to just take a few moments and focus on where our heart really is. We might say we, we have a heart for heaven or we're, you know, we're desiring to go to heaven. We want to be sure that we make it there. But then we live as though our treasures are here. And we need to really recognize the importance of priorities that last. Our lives are slipping away. And the days just seem to go by so fast. Day follows day. And we just kind of we get into you might say a rut. We, we go through the, the various activities that we have. And yet there's this question that we need to begin kind of mulling over in our mind. Is my life really making a difference? Am I really making any difference with the way I'm living day after day? You know, I, I want to end my life having made a difference, but if I'm not doing it day by day, then I'm, I'm not really preparing to leave a legacy behind. People around the world devote themselves to all sorts of things these days. And we could go through a whole big long list from saving the whales to uh, combating homelessness, uh, maybe digging wells for needy culture some other place. It just goes on and on and on. There's all sorts of them, many of them not worth mentioning, I suppose. But the question really comes down to what I'm devoting my life to. Am I making a difference? Am I living with priorities that will last for eternity? Am I laying up treasures in heaven? That's what it really comes down to. And so this morning, we want to focus on this a little while. The passage here, obviously, is the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus was giving you know, about basically three chapters of instruction and, and really covers a whole variety of things. It merits our time over and over to go back to this sermon that Jesus gave. But it's important for us to apply these things in our own hearts and lives. And, and of course, these are the words of Jesus himself. This is not just some um, self-promoting guru or whatever, the, some preacher's idea or, or a motivational speaker. No, this is Jesus' words himself. And so we need to take them to heart. This is not just some new theory. It's not maybe it's some way to live a better life. This is the way to please God. And so whatever he tells us is a priority, better really find root in our hearts. Because it's easy for us just to sort of cast it off and, well, those are good thoughts and, and maybe even spend a little time thinking about them and, and uh, discussing them. But it's more than just for discussion. This is God's caution to our hearts, to our lives. And we seem to be especially needy sometimes in these particular areas. And, uh, you know, you travel around from church to church. You can 
can uh, grow up in in a a Christian home or family, and we have our ideas that well we're really pleasing God, and yet over and over we'll find the the just sort of the <laughs> exhibit A so to speak or the illustration the example. Oh, they said they would be there to help. They said they would do this or that to to be a blessing. They said they'd stand behind me, but I see they're focused on this and that and over here, and it's all about them. What about God's work? What about doing something to lay up treasures in heaven? We're in such a self-absorbed culture today, and it seems like even those in the church are struggling with this. And they're always prioritizing other things instead of God's things, pleasing him and laying up treasures in heaven. Again, our promising words can sound so good in the emotion of the moment, but as a pastor, I've experienced it a number of times. I've discovered that assurances of all sorts of help and support and sacrifice might not just always come to pass like we thought they would. And so even here this morning, we need to recognize this. It's disturbing sometimes how little people care after offering so much. And yet that's just a pastor's perspective. And yet what must God think when we always say we'll do this and we say we'll be there for that and and oh Lord, you can count on me. I'll be there. I'll be counted on. And then we're nowhere to be found. Our treasures are still being laid up on earth. We may claim to love him, but our lives too often can be lived for self. And so this morning, let's focus on this just a little bit. Again, part of the legacy series, and I think we need to inspect our own lives. Say, Lord, show me my priorities. Help me to truly live as I profess that I will, and as I've told you that I would. Don't let my devotion just be all talk and no action. Help me to be genuine in my priorities. And so let's look at just several things that I I feel like we need to focus on here this morning. And we're going to start pretty well right there at the beginning with verse number 19. And I want to draw your attention to the words that Jesus used here. Now, really pay attention to what he's saying. We're We're going to kind of delve into this and sort of break it apart a little bit here this morning. Let's look at verse number 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. What exactly is he saying here? Uh, Again, is this sort of a general guideline? Is this this good advice? Um, Is it the way to to, do a little better uh, in your your spiritual life or something? Well, I I suppose that's part of it, but these are the words of Jesus, and he he comes right out and, and tells us, don't lay your treasures up here. And so what I'm going to focus on first, you might not like the sound of this very much. It probably does sound a little bit extreme, but I've called it, first of all, the plague of possessions. The plague of possessions. Now, again, this might seem overstated. It might seem like this is too harsh, but Jesus really didn't mince words here. He, he didn't beat around the bush. He just simply said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Now, I I know that sounds extreme. It sounds like surely he meant something different. Uh, And and we'll focus on this a little bit, but surely he he, he meant meant in there, it's probably just not translated right. He probably meant only. He, He should have said only. Lay not up for yourselves only treasures upon earth. But that's not what it says. It says this world is not, I know I'm paraphrasing, but this world is not our home and this is not where we put our treasures. I know we might want to apply this a little more comfortably, but it's not only or wholly about the treasures in heaven. It is, uh, or just when we... When we think of it that way, I guess I said it, that the way we we often would want to think of it, well, it's not only there. It's not only about heavenly things. That's what we'd like to say it, but that's not what he said. He said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, but treasures over there. 
And I hope I said that right. Because uh, I, I think you understand what I mean. But it is it is easy for us to sort of twist it a little bit. And well, I think maybe I can, can uh, fudge here a little bit. And, and you know, he doesn't want us to be only about heaven. I mean, we're living on this earth, so surely there has to be some here. And I, I do understand that maybe there is some, some uh, balance here when he tells us to provide for our, those of our own household and things of that sort. But he very plainly said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. And so we have to do something with that. And sometimes it may be a little difficult for us and we think, well, surely... You know, we're supposed to do our part, but maybe if you go down a little bit further here, right after that uh, reading that I gave to you already, we, we ended at verse 24, but if you go to verse 25, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. It goes on and tells how your heavenly Father takes care of the, the birds and, and uh, you know, the lilies as well. Uh, all these different things that if God could clothe those things, surely he can take care of you. He goes on and on. He's he, the, basically the rest of the chapter. He's saying, don't worry about now. Don't worry about this life and whether you have enough and whether you are are uh, able to just provide for yourself. He said, lay your treasures up there and I'll take care of you here. The fact is, then you finally get to verse number 33 that we so often may notice. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's not saying that we can't have possessions, but don't focus on them. Sometimes they can be a plague because they get us off track. We have the responsibility to avoid simply accumulating things and striving for earthly comforts. And so this morning, sometimes our possessions can be plagues. It could be something that actually gets us distracted from what really matters. And we need to go back to what he wants us to focus on. And again, really, we're surrounded by the pool of possessions. It's always pulling us here and pulling us there and, and always wanting to, to uh, get us distracted. I know it might not be a very popular theme, but we must get out of the rut of materialism. Always focusing on the next gadget and having something a little better. Many cases, the things we have would serve us very well, but it's always something new. And I, I know the struggle is there for me as well. But God expects us to be heavenly minded rather than focused on the temporal and earthly things. And so let's recognize the plague of possessions. And then he goes on and he says, first of all, he says, don't lay your treasures up here, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And he goes on and talks about that, verse 21, where your treasure is there, will your heart be also. And so what I've uh, noticed here in the next section, first of all, he tells us, beware of the plague of possessions. And then instead have a passion for permanence or those things that will last. A passion for permanence. Jesus knew the struggle that we have to keep our lives in balance and how, how easy it is to get get out of balance and we're focused on the here and now and we miss what, what is, is really valuable and what will last for eternity. And our focus has to be higher when it comes between choosing or it comes to choosing between this life and the next. And again, you know, we, we'd like to say that we are focused on heaven and focused on God and he has his full right of way, you know, whatever he wants, he can have and all those things. But then sometimes it seems odd when we see those who focus truly on eternal things. Those who are more interested in giving away than they are in hoarding for themselves. Those who are more interested in spending time working for the kingdom instead of just working for what I want and the next fancy thing that, that I might think will, will add to my entertainment or my comfort. Jesus instructed our priorities. And he said, don't lay your treasures up here, but lay them up there. Focus on the afterlife where those things will not be destroyed through moth or rust or thieves. 
And then he also gives us a, a warning here. And I want to just touch on this quickly as well, because he says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I believe some time back, I don't know, maybe several years, I don't know how long, but we focused on this issue of our treasure and where our heart is. And if we are not careful, we say our heart is in heaven, but our treasures are here, and it doesn't work that way. Our heart follows our treasure, or I understand they work hand in hand, and so that maybe sounds a little strange, but the point is, when we focus on what is important here, this is what we get bound to. I don't want to leave these things. I don't want to, I don't want to forsake that. Well, really, we ought to be focused on heaven and be looking forward to going there. Now, I know the question may be sometimes, how can I do this properly? I mean, how do I truly lay up treasures in heaven? Um, you know, I mean, obviously I live in this world. And I might do some things to try to increase the kingdom. And we, you know, we try to be a blessing to others and, and all those things. And certainly we recognize there are, are scriptures like giving a cup of cold water and, and even it mentioned there even a disciple's name. And it's not going to lose its reward. It's just this on and on. There's a number of those types of things. But maybe I could give you just a few principles here this morning that I believe are important if we want to have a passion for what lasts for permanent blessing and benefit, then we need to focus on several things. And uh, certainly we sense the shaky financial situation these days. And so how can we, we lay up treasures that really, really, truly will last? Well, the first thing I would notice with you, again, these are principles. These are not individual, you know, necessarily an individual um, event or, or particular Thing, but but I'm going to give you principles. I hope you can apply them yourself. We'll talk about them just a little bit. First of all, focus on people more than possessions. Focus on people more than possessions. Now, we may feel like, well, obviously we do that. I mean, that's normal. That's, that's natural. And yet you might be surprised how often people are kind of put to the side so that I can really get what I'm going for. So that that my business can thrive so that, that I can pad my bank account. And, and sometimes there are those who may try to push others down so they can rise to the top so their finances can take uh, you know, a better, uh, better course. And sometimes we might say, oh, sure, I, I love people more than possessions, but if we were watch, to watch our lives and see where we put our money and what, what we're spending our time on, we'd see the possessions actually turns out to be more important than people. We have to ask God to somehow help us to really recognize what matters. These possessions will be burned up, but people and their souls will last for eternity. God help us to focus on people more than possessions. <clears throat> now, that can happen a variety of ways, I suppose. We're going to talk about that just a little bit more in a, in a moment here. But we need to, to sort of let God stir our minds. I mean, it's one thing for us to just talk that way. Okay. All right, I need to make sure people are more important than possessions, but how does that happen? Well, the second aspect, and I, I guess very closely related there, is that we need to focus on blessing others more than simply our business. And so that's really where this kind of comes down to, is we can, now you may not have your own business, but we can talk about business as sort of a general concept. And so those things we do day to day. Uh, sometimes we, we say, you know, that hopefully you don't say this in a wrong way, but you know, well, that's my business. That that's not really your affair. That's my business. That's that's what what I do. That's how my days are spent. That's what my time is spent on. That's what my money goes to. It's those things that I am I'm involved with. And so we need to recognize even here this morning, it's easy for us to focus on our own benefits and our own business and those things that that we want to pursue instead of blessing someone else. Now, I know that's difficult sometimes, but could we just for a moment go back in our mind to the story Jesus gave of the Good Samaritan? Now, the story is is certainly focused on him because he was the one that uh, that showed love. That was that was the context there. How do I love my neighbor? Well, okay, by being like the Good Samaritan. So we, we look at the story. The man 
was fallen among uh, the thieves there, you might say, or along the roadside, but, but beaten by thieves. And he's left for dead, apparently. I think they, uh, the scripture says he was left half dead. And um, so, you know, the, the key people, the, the priest and the Levite, these are religious men. They come by, they see the situation, but they're too preoccupied, it seems. There, there may have been some other aspects involved. Probably he was bleeding. Uh, obviously, blood was a, kind of a key issue to make someone impure. Uh, you weren't supposed to be touching that. And so maybe that was part of the issue that they didn't want to, to soil their hands with something that would make them unclean as they headed to worship. But finally, you come to the Good Samaritan and he comes along and he's not just, sure, he had his own business pursuits, I imagine. The priest and Levite, they're going, probably their pursuits would have been even in religion. And yet this man puts aside his own comforts his own benefits, his own business, and he focuses on blessing someone. Not, not just a matter of, of soothing him, not just getting a, a rock for his head to be laid on there and kind of a little pillow type of thing, not just to kind of help him sit up and maybe give him a drink. No, he actually bound up his wounds, he put him on his beast, he took him to the inn, he paid for his, his stay there and for his care, he was more interested in blessing someone else. And Jesus gave that as the example of how we show love to others. So Jesus pointed at the, figuratively at least, he's pointing at the religious people and he's saying, when you just go right on and you do your own thing and your priorities are all about even, maybe in their case, even religion, religious activity, but you're not so much interested in helping people blessing others, you've missed the point. It's easy for us now to talk about the Good Samaritan. Easy for us to talk about the priest and the Levite. But how often do we just rush right on past people who need our help? People we could bless. People we could take a little time for. People we could listen to in their troubles. People we could spend a little time praying for. But oh no, we're more interested in our own pursuits, our own business. We want to focus and, and have a passion on permanent things, eternal value. Then we need to focus on people more than possessions and blessing others more than just our business, our, our own pursuits. And the third one I want to notice with you is that we need to focus also on revival more than relaxation. We need to focus more on revival than relaxation. Now, in some ways we would say, okay, how do we lay up treasures? Well, we probably are thinking about running our business, you know, going to work, getting extra, you know, entertainment and various things, pleasure, as opposed to, um, you know, always in prayer, Bible reading. That's kind of the the separation we make readily. I, I think when we read that, that's probably the way we think of it. We're thinking of our possessions as opposed to, you might call it piety or, or our religious walk with God. Okay? But sometimes maybe this issue of our treasures is not even about accumulating anything necessarily but just being comfortable, just sitting back and being comfortable. Some years ago, I was so disturbed by some of this, and I was doing, I guess, even some research, some thought. Probably some of it was, was misguided, probably a little selfish on my part, really. But, but thinking a lot about this issue, the word is, is apathy. Basically, just, I don't care. You know, don't bother me. Just let me enjoy my life. Just let me sleep, so to speak. You know, I don't want to have to get involved. I just don't. It's too much trouble. I don't want to. Yeah, that's that's what apathy is. So it stirred me a bit because it just seemed like we see that so often and people don't want to get involved in any, in, anymore. There's, there's a, whole, a big lack in many cases, at least 
in spiritual realms anyway. Now, I'm sure there are, there are numbers of exceptions, but people don't really want to be involved. We're lacking volunteers. We, we have to be able to, to have a special role or we really don't want to be involved. We, we have to have our, our name kind of recognized. And in some cases, it may even be that that's not enough motivation. And it's more of a just an enclosed, uh, you know, let me be type mentality. But that's not scriptural. That's not Christian. The Christian is to be doing something for God. The Christian is not to be focused on me, but focused on what priorities God sets and, and how he wants to govern our lives. So now we get back to this issue and we need to focus on revival more than just relaxation. Always looking for that downtime, always looking for those things that, that will make me feel better. And I can, can sort of sit back and relax. And I, there's nothing wrong necessarily with just sitting back and relaxing at times. But here's where the problem sometimes can be. We're so caught up in our leisure or pleasure uh, maybe even sometimes it's because we've worked so hard here that now I've got to have downtime. And so I don't have time for revival or se really seeking after God or stirring myself to be more what he'd want me to be. I don't have time to go out and visit someone and witness to them. I don't have time to step into, of course, right now it might be a little difficult uh, with restrictions, but even still somewhat maybe, but uh, you know, go to the hospital and see somebody who's sick or struggling. I don't have time for those things because I need my leisure. You know, we cannot have revival without it costing us something. And so when we want to lay up treasures in heaven, something that will last, we need to start asking ourselves, what will this activity, this leisure, this pleasure, what will this matter for eternity? Now, it's not saying that we should never have it. I believe Jesus even took some time uh, off with his disciples to kind of go and rest and relax. I, I believe we need those times. But we better be careful that we're not always looking for the next leisure spot and focus on revival instead of just relaxation. We're laying up treasures, or we're supposed to be laying up treasures in heaven. We need to have a passion for the permanent values. Permanency, those things that will last forever. Those things that can stand the test of fire one day. I don't have all the answers for some of this. I'm going to move on here, but uh, it does talk like there is a judgment where our deeds, not just a matter of were we a Christian or not a Christian, but our deeds, did they matter or are they burned up in the fire? If we're living for the here and now, they'll be burned up. But if we're living for eternity, if we are focused on revival and what matters, they will be the gold, silver, and precious stones that stand the test of fire. One more thing I want to quickly notice with you is verse number 24 gives us the point of pain. The point of pain. Yes, so far we've noticed the plague of possessions. We've noticed the passion for permanence. But there's also the point of pain. And I know this might sound a little strange at first, but notice what he says. Just that first statement there. No man can serve two masters. And that brings us to the point of pain. The rub, so to speak. The, the trouble, the difficulty that we deal with. Now we can agree, I think, probably, hopefully all of you can agree, even here this morning, that we need to serve God. We need to please Him. We need to do what, what is, is uh, priorities, uh, a priority in His heart and mind. We need to do His will. But we seem more inclined to think that we can pursue both God and pleasures or possessions. It's, it's a both and situation instead of an either or. That's, that's what we would like. Okay, so think about those two conjunctions. Many times both and and go together in, in grammar. And the other option, one of the other common options is either or. Okay, so in our minds, we read this passage and we say it's the both and issue. Uh, you know, we can have 
God and we can have possessions. But if you read this with an open mind and open heart, is that what Jesus said? That brings us to the point of pain because he said, don't lay them up here, but lay them up there. So that is an either or situation. Notice the last phrase there in verse 24. It's not just a phrase, it's a sentence. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Now, our excuse so often is the serve part. Okay, well, I don't serve mammon. I do serve God. I don't serve mammon. I'm glad for mammon. I'm glad for the possessions that I can have. But I don't serve them. That's where we focus. But we need to come to this point. It might be a point of pain. But we need to recognize that it's time for us to give up our desire to be comfortable and well-established. And even in a sense, I hope you understand this, but even happy. I've told you over and over, God's real focus is not our happiness, but our holiness. And he wants us to focus on what will matter for eternity. The problem really comes down to who our master is going to be. When the God of this world has blinded so many eyes, I mean, we can see it. It's pretty obvious. And we're focused on pleasure. We're focused on possession. We're focused on those things that won't last. And yet we're called to choose the narrow way, the straight gate, the narrow way that leads to life. We must focus on the either or. It's either going to be our focus here or our focus there. And if it comes down to that, not both, but either. I hope, hope you understand where I'm going here. Not both God and mammon, but either God or mammon. We better make the wise choice. Yes, it may be a point of pain for some, especially if your focus has been on on your own pursuits, your own priorities, your own possessions. And our possessions or our priorities can can really, many times it is possessions, but our priorities in general, whatever that may be, can often look pretty normal and acceptable and reasonable in the moment. But really, I guess the question comes down, what will they look like to God? And really, I guess everybody, the world, if everything is shouted from the housetops, what will our priorities look like on Judgment Day? What am I focused on? Will my, pro- will my priorities prove to be selfish? Will they prove to be trite, insignificant at that day? Well, we discover that our heart was really not truly devoted to God. Oh, we had the profession. We'd say that we would do whatever God wanted, but not whenever it really came down to it. Are we really devoted to heavenly things? It's time to confront those issues now. It's time to focus our priorities and say, Lord, help me to lay up my treasures there. Don't let me be distracted by the American dream and all that the world has to offer, but help me to have a priority that is focused on heavenly things, those things that will stand, not just the test of time, but for eternity. So this morning, do you have priorities that last? Are you really focused on what matters? Not just to the world around you, not just to your neighbors, not even to your family, but to God himself. Priorities that last.